Hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Megan, the Healing Foods Coach, and I'm so glad that you took time out of your day to watch this video and to enjoy the content. And hopefully it is helpful. Hopefully it is helpful and informative. So I am actually wearing my official Toronto Maple Leafs hockey team hoodie because we are in the preseason and the regular season kicks off in about a week's time. So that's what's going on in our family. Today's topic, uh, as we get ready to jump right in, to fast or not to fast. And this is a this is a topic I think that is debated quite a lot uh, amongst those of us in this community, those of us who are eating a carnivorous diet, whether we call it low carb keto, ketovore, um, carnivore, lion diet, high fat, uh, therapeutic keto, um, or somewhere in the spectrum. It is a question that many people have. Now, let me first start out by saying that doing fasting, whether it's intermittent um, on a regular basis, whether you have a few days every month where maybe you do an extended fast, can have benefits. And I, I absolutely will not deny the fact that there are benefits because there are loads of benefits. When you get to a certain point of, of fasting, there is a process called autophagy, and that is where your cells can start to be, the, the dead ones are cleared out. There's a lot of amazing healing that happens. Um, and of course, that helps people to uh, lose additional body fat and help them uh, improve their body composition. All good things. However, my impression is that for the most part, this tends to be something that is much easier for men to do than women. And I think the main point being is because men don't seem to have the same hormonal effects when they fast as women can, particularly women who have a long history of severe restricting, uh, possibly self-starving, such as an anorexia nervosa, if you were diagnosed with that, or just severely restricting. Um, and even those of us who maybe never had a full-blown eating disorder, if we've had a very long history of, in many cases for a lot of us, decades, of yo-yo dieting, we have essentially broken our metabolisms. They, our metabolism, when we come into this space, is often quite sluggish, okay? And so a lot of that is because we have denied ourselves nutrition. We've either, so either we've been eating lots and lots of food that had very poor nutritional quality, or we simply re restricted the amounts we were bringing in and we were not getting enough into our bodies to start with. Either way, we have come from a background of many, many years of a stressed state where we've deprived our bodies of good nutrition, either through volume or quality of our food choices. And so many times when we go and we start trying to do a fast, we can find it very difficult. There can be feelings of nausea, severe headaches, weakness, dizziness, because most of the time we end up not preparing our bodies well in advance before we do a fast. In other words, if you are going to follow a protocol that includes intermittent fasting or extended fasting event for any reason, then you have to make sure that you have feasted and fueled your body with loads of fat. The protein is important, but more significantly, you need the fat coming into the body to act as fuel and energy to get you through those times when you're going to be denying yourself nutritional food. And actually, if you think back to our history as uh, an ancient species, prehistoric man, or even our ancient brethren, uh, when they were without food for extended periods, when they did catch something, they made sure to eat as much of the fat, whether it was marrow or the collagen off the animal or just the fat that came with the meat, they ate it all because it would give them enough energy to sustain them, especially when there were going to be long stretches of time between when they 
ate the kill and when they caught their next animal. So it makes sense that you need to thoroughly prepare your body um, before you do any kind of a fast. And I think what often happens, at least in my case, I certainly found this, is we think because we have experience of dieting or restricting or going into starvation mode periods, we don't think to prep ourselves in advance. And that's where a lot of these issues can happen. Now, I, I, I've understood or I've heard it said from, from many people in the space that they have done uh, programs or protocols where they work on learning how to properly feast and fuel their bodies so they then do not feel the, the stress of um, going through the, the fasting famine period, if you will, which I'm sure works great for so many people. And actually, Bella from Steak and Butter Gal, uh, her, she has her monthly group uh, coaching um, challenges and mixed in with that, what, what those are is it's 30 days where you train your body to be feast, to be fed properly. So feasting so that it can then handle fasting. Um, and you work your way up to several hours to 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. And I, and I don't believe any of them ever go beyond the 72 hours because truthfully, you really don't need to. It's 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 kind of been found that anything beyond that is is really you're not necessarily getting any additional benefits just because you've gone more than three days. And the goal being, you want to get into, you may be wanting to reach autophagy, uh, get rid of the dead cells, uh, help clear up any anything that needs repairing in the body, and that's also a good way to learn to really burn off your body fat. And so for many people, it does work. I would say, however, that even if you have trained your body as a female, if you've trained your body and you are learning how to feed it properly before fasting, you may still want to tread with caution because either case where you are loading up the body with fuel in order to prepare for a fast, you are still putting your body into a state of stress. Okay. Because you are making your body eat to the point where you're no, you learn how to eat to the point where you are uncomfortable. So you're not simply eating to satiety because that's going to get you say from your morning meal for several hours into a late afternoon or evening meal. That's what happens when you start eating to satiety. But when you're eating in order to prep yourself for a fast, you are in the beginning, you are forcing your body to take in more than it necessarily wants to at that time. You're training it and that is forcing it into doing something that it wouldn't do necessarily naturally. And so you are kind of forcing it into a state of feeding so that you can then force it into a state of fasting. And again, in short periods of time or for brief, brief times of the year, like not every single day of the week, but when you do that, you are still putting your body into a state of stress, which is going to raise your cortisol levels, which will make it a little more difficult to see results. If you are already in a state of high cortisol because of other stressful factors in your life and you're just switching to this new way of eating and you start jumping into um, these intermittent or longer term fasts, you are still putting your body into a stressed state. Even if you've prepared, you are still going into a stressed state. Now, how stressed you are, I think may depend on how well prepared you are and how long you do this fast for. Again, if you're exceeding 72 hours, well, then you're carrying on you're carrying on additional unnecessary stress on the body and your cortisol is going to start to rise. And so your benefits may become negligible at that point. Okay. Not to say that you won't see some results because I, I'm sure you will, but if you do it for long enough over a length, long enough period of time, then the results may become less noticeable. All right. And at that point, you may simply be doing something that is putting you into 
a structured state of stress on the body. Just like if you start running and you go running two days a week and you've never run before, initially you're, you're putting your body into a point of stress because you're forcing it to run when you haven't run before. And the, the, the thing being, if you've only done it one or two days to start with, and you're giving yourself plenty of time to recover, then the overall negative effects may not be too bad. But if you then end up running for 10 miles or more at high speed every single day, and you have less and less recovery time, then you are continuing in a stress state. You're not giving your body a chance to recover. You are then going to have higher levels of cortisol consistently and what you will probably end up finding is though you may have had some success with losing weight in the beginning the less recovery time you allow yourself um the more stressed your body the higher your cortisol levels you'll find that your ability to lose any weight at that point starts to slow down you're pushing yourself you're you're over exercising and you're staying in a constant stressed state, which is not beneficial to the body, right? Walking, you can probably do for miles. Most people, if they're taking a nice casual stroll, several miles on a daily basis, but they're enjoying the weather and they're not pushing through like, oh, I got to speed walk it and make a new land speed record. Then you're just keeping your body moving and you're not going to have that excessive um, stress and exercise affecting your body. For example, there was a time earlier in this year where I was walking almost 10 miles every day. And for the first, I, I didn't do it every day at one point. I started out slow, worked at, started at four miles, built up to six or seven fairly quickly. And then I kept adding on to that. And then I kept increasing the days I did it. So six days a week, I was out walking almost 10 miles. Um, and what I found, however, was after about a month when Sunday would come and I was supposed to take that as my rest day, I found that I was enjoying those days off, but I was finding it much harder and much harder to get back into that pushing hard routine on a Monday. And then I went away on holiday for three weeks with my husband and I was in a new place, different country. I didn't have the same walking route that I normally did. And actually, because I'd had a few days off, five days off, let's say, to adjust and get over the jet lag, I didn't get back into my regular routine. And when I tried to, it was too much. I was achy. I was sore. I pushed myself too hard, too often for too long. And the crazy thing is that even though I was pushing myself because I thought, if I do the super intense speed walking and all these miles and I make it happen, I'm going to, and I was also at the gym three times a week at the same time, which is too much for my body. Okay. I was pushing myself to the point where I, my body was in such a, such a state of stress that didn't matter how much I was going to the gym. Didn't matter if I was walking 10 miles every day and eating high fat and not eating a whole lot of food throughout my day. Um, I could not shift any of the weight and any of, any of the belly weight I was trying to lose because my cortisol was through the roof. Didn't help. My cortisol was unbelievably high at that point. And I had to slowly cut everything out. I stopped, had to stop going to the gym. Plus all the weights um, were causing me uh, severe SI joint pain, which I have anyways you know, joint dysfunction. But the point being is that I was in such a high level of stress. My body was in such a highly stressed state that it didn't matter if I was doing all this exercise. I had so much cortisol that it, the fat wasn't going anywhere. And it wasn't until I stopped, readjusted, and just slowly tried to get out and walk half a mile every day, just to move a little bit every day without these extra long endurances and without pushing myself so hard at the gym constantly without allowing myself time to recover. When I started to allow myself time to recover, when I started to allow myself <clears throat> the ability of just taking the dogs on a walk, and if that's all I did, it was actually okay. 
I stop putting myself into this chronic state of stress. And guess what? My cortisol levels came down and I started to drop some of the belly fat. And it and it has come down drastically since since before. And the same thing happens when we are constantly fasting in a in a because it puts our bodies into a stressed state. So can there be some benefits from some intermittent fasting? Yes. And there are loads of people who do it and have great success and feel amazing. And I am so glad that they do. I would not wish them ill health at all. Okay. But I think we need to be very cautious. Um, do you have to fast as a carnivore? Of course you don't. It's an extra tool. If you try it, maybe you do it once or twice a week and that helps you reset things. Fabulous. But I would, again, I, I advise this with great caution. If you are fasting multiple days at a time, every week of the month, every month of the year, you are eventually going to put yourself into a state of constant stress, especially if you are not feasting properly beforehand and giving yourself a time to recover from your fast, right? We need to nourish ourselves beforehand and also important, you have to nourish yourself as well afterwards. So what I would say, whether people, when people ask me, should they fast? My suggestion is one, if you're a female and you have a long history of restrictive eating, binging, purging, even a full, fully blown diagnosed eating disorder, I would suggest you perhaps do not fast because that can easily become a trigger point. It certainly is for me, which is the main reason why I stay away from it. I do not fast because it triggers too many things for me. I would suggest staying away from the fasting for now. Work on getting in fat first thing in the day, you know, bringing down the cortisol levels, getting enough nutrition, um, especially why? Because we need the cortisol or sorry, we don't need cortisol. We need the cholesterol. We need the dietary cholesterol to make the hormones to get our thyroid functioning, which then affects all of our sex hormones from the sex organs and then the other hormones in our body. We need we need the cholesterol for those hormones, right? Whether it's leptin to tell us we're full, ghrelin to tell us we're we're hungry, whether it's insulin that needs to regulate uh, the bumps that we do get from pro protein does affect insulin moderately, nowhere near what carbohydrates do, but there is still a bump in insulin when we eat protein. And so we need to have um, a healthy response to the insulin. We, we don't want to be insulin resistant. We want there to be um, a good, healthy response to insulin. We need some insulin in our bodies. We have to have at least some because otherwise we risk dying. So it's not that we want to have zero insulin, but we want to keep it as low as possible. Okay. Um, we need to work on those things. We need to, from women, especially, we need to improve our hormone health, starting with our thyroids. How? By getting rid of the sugar and the processed junk and all the high carb stuff. Absolutely start there without a doubt. But I would also suggest if we have a history of restrictive eating, trying to starve ourselves thinner, whether it's a full blown eating disorder or not, we have spent years putting ourselves into a stressed state. And as a result, oftentimes our, um, our metabolism is essentially broken or works very ineffectively. And we need to work on healing that first. And as that is managed by the thyroid, we need to have healthy hormones. So instead of worrying about fasting, we need to worry first about getting the good fats in our bodies, healing those things first. That would be my, that would be my recommendation. Now, obviously you guys are grownups, you're adults. You can do whatever you uh, feel moved to do. But if you have that sort of history, I would I would suggest, if I may, that if you're like me, do not fast, at least not in the beginning. OK, because your your body's already in a bit of a stress state because you're completely changing your diet. If you then start having days where you're fasting, 
whether it's a fat fast or a water fast or something else, you're still putting yourself into a stressed state and you don't really want to add that in on top of the stress of switching to a brand new diet. Now, just a quick side point. Anytime we dramatically change our diet, our bodies will go into a stress state because we're doing something new to it that it's not used to. That does not mean that, that you should avoid a carnivorous diet because your, your body will be in a bit of a stress state. It, that doesn't last for long and the benefits will far outweigh um, any negative experiences you have as you transition from a standard Western garbage diet into a carnivorous one. Okay. So please hear me say that there will be some stress to the body because you're changing up your diet, but it's a good stress because you're eventually going to get rid of all the garbage and all the, all the, um, things that are slowly acting like poisons in your body. You're going to get those out. And so you are very quickly going from being in a stressed state from changing your diet to a healthy state because you're now eating the things that nourish your body. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so should you fast? Should you not fast? Well, listen, if you're a guy and you want to try fasting, go right ahead. I have no issue with that because again, men typically don't seem to have any issues with doing fasting, whether it's intermittent or whether it's um, longer stretches of fasting, like say 48 to 72 hours at a go. You probably want to still look at prepping and you probably still should look at making sure you are fed enough before you fast so that you do not feel the headaches and the nausea and all the other things that happen when you simply starve your body of food. Okay, so you still need to prep yourself before you start a fast would be my advice. And again, I know that um, Bella and her group over at Steak and Butter Gal, they do a whole protocol um, and they have some great information. And so if that's something you're absolutely keen to do, definitely go check out her channel uh, or join the um, Steak and Butter Gang. And that's what they do in their coaching, in their monthly group sessions. Okay, so if that's something you want to try, go for it. And again, you can still try if you're female, just keep in mind that if you're coming from a restrictive background where you're already in a state of stress because you haven't been, because you've been under eating and under nourishing your body, then I would suggest you maybe delay any sort of fasting for at least the first six months. Okay. Because you want to get your body in a good, healthy place before you add even more stress to it. And for me personally, um, I, I personally can never, ever do a full intentional fast. Even if I was to prep with feasting in advance, I wouldn't be able to do it because it, for me, it's far too easy. It's a slippery slope to step back into um, bulimia and severe restricting. And so I'm not willing to take that risk. If that isn't your background and it's something you want to try, as I say, go check out Steak and Butter Gal um, and her group. Well, she gives you links and, and there's a number of her videos where she'll give you links to the Steak and Butter Gang. If you want to do the 30 day challenge, she does them every month. So check out her channel if you want more information. But again, as somebody who has personally come out of severe restricting and um, an eating disorder, I did try that briefly for a month um, a couple of years ago. OK, so I was already uh, two years into carnivore. I would never have attempted it my first few months of carnivore, I think it's far too much stress on the body and that can affect our hormones, which can affect things like our menstrual cycles or, um, you know, menopause, it may delay it or it may speed it up. It can also, um, affect issues. If you already deal with something like PCOS, then if your hormones are out of balance, that can become even worse. So a lot of things can go wrong when we are not nourishing our bodies properly, as, as we know, because that's why we're here in the first place, right? I would recommend if you are going to, if you do want to try some, some intermittent fasting, um, 
course, obviously that's your, that's your call and, and it can be helpful and it has helped many people, but I would, I would plead with you if I may, please wait until you're at least six months into carnivore, at least minimal. Okay. Because it's just far too much stress on the body on top of the stress of completely changing your diet. Hope that makes sense. Anyways, guys, I hope that answers your question. Uh, if you have any other comments, if you have any other questions, feel free to obviously put them in the comments as you do. I really appreciate you guys. Your support and your encouragement means everything to me. And I'm super, super, super excited every time you guys leave your little likes and comments on the channel. If you're interested in some one-to-one -one coaching, uh, of course, I do offer sessions. Go to the website. It's down here at the bottom of the screen and book your session. And I would love to work with you. And let's get healing together. That's it for today's video. Thank you for your time. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.